My name is George. I am the founder of the Karma Project. I'm not the ICO pitching because we already made a token sale last year. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the trust itself. And um, also, I help uh, several countries to establish the legal environment. For example, I am the founder of the experts chamber in the Russian parliament, and I also consult the Korean government. So I have some interesting things to tell you. Uh, there are reasons and consequences. So let's talk about the consequences and the nature of our project. So there are countries with uh, zero interest rates. They're considered to be rich, like Japan or Northern Europe, Switzerland, Israel, whatever. And countries with very huge interest rates, especially on the business loans for the SMEs, small and medium enterprises. Like, for example, in Russia, we have up to 40% interest rate. That's huge. No matter how uh, many inflation rate we have, like 10% or 8%, it's way too far. So anyway, uh, there's a huge arbitrage. Uh, when we have the same one, in Bitcoin, maybe you heard about the kimchi premium. How many guys have made some million dollars from the kimchi premium? Nope. Uh, so uh, the Bitcoin and Ethereum have been overpriced in South Korea for a long time. And it was like plus 30% to other world. So you can have a huge arbitrage. And so people eliminate it in a few months because they written the bots, they made some cross-trading. Etc. But why do we have so huge uh, delta, so huge arbitrage, and nobody is cutting that to zero? I don't know, because the market is huge. We have like almost $40 trillion in the stash of the people in deposits in the banks, which have negative interest rates. Why do you uh, store the money in the banks, which are just evaporating your money uh, instead of making them work? And uh, there's al also about $2.6 trillion of only registered and declined uh, loan requests for the SMEs in the world. I think uh, the real number is like double more because most of the SMEs, for example, in Russia, don't even go to the bank because they are scared. And um, what are the reasons uh, why people just don't trust each other? So we got to think a little bit and uh, to think about what are the sources of the trust itself. Uh, there's a lot of investigations and even scientific articles and the books, and the answers are very simple. So first is the cultural solidity. And it's obvious if we consider the worldwide project and the worldwide community, it's impossible to achieve the cultural solidity because we have Asians, uh, United Arab Emirates, we have African guys, and they are all different. And uh, it's impossible to unite everybody and uh, make them all similar. So let's skip it. Uh, second one is the third-party trust markers. So, for example, Vitalik Buterin have a lot of issues with his Twitter because there's a lot of scammers who try to swap the letters Vitalik Buterin, Vitalik Buterin, etc., and trying to scam and raise some Ethereum, and they are succeeded in that. They have raised millions of dollars in Ethereum just by uh, replacing some letters in his account. So that's why he even renamed his account to Vitalik, not giving away Ethereum <laughs> Buterin. And um, also, for example, Airbnb, if you, you're a super host, and if you hosted a lot of people and they were glad to be at your apartment, they leave you a mark and you achieve some medals. Uh, and also, this is the Will Smith. I'm, I think it's about four years old. And uh, you got to be uh, surely understand and clear that this Instagram is belongs to the Will Smith directly and uh, some third party have like stamp and the trust mark on it. So it's achievable and I'll show you how. And the third uh, uh, source of the trust is the horizontal networks. So when you like having a picnic with your uh, friends or with some newbies uh, in a very unofficial atmosphere, it's very likely to become more relaxed and trust each other a bit more. So 
uh, to resume, if we cut up the cultural solidity, which is quite impossible in terms of global projects, uh, the rest two of them is the public le reputation ledger and improving the horizontal networks. So how we achieve that in Karma projects, for example. We use the blockchain for the storage as a storage of the personal credit history, uh, of the personal reputation data, and uh, it's immutable, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of talks about it today and the yesterday. And also, for example, if you're a guy from Russia and you have like a small and medium enterprise and you're constantly borrowing money from Koreans or uh, United States citizens and you repay the loans on time so everybody can see that you're a good guy and you're a trustworthy and people can trust you more and next time they will give you more money at the lower interest rate. And that's why you will be motivated to earn your reputation and take care of it for a long time, for many years in a row. And um, also there's an interesting stuff that for now, credit history is not belong to the people. I think that's not fair. For example, I check my credit history just to be safe once a year, and it's a headache in Russia. I gotta go to the special bank, fill the form, wait the queue like a half an hour, pay money, and then I will receive my credit history. And even more, this credit history sometimes contains the bugs. And I got to spend some time and more money to uh, update the history and make it clear and uh, more um, updated. Um, so we provide the ownership of the credit history to the people and they can benefit from it and they can have an access and they can publish the access to it. Uh, also, uh, yeah, I've told, I've told you about it already. And about the horizontal networks. Uh, recently, due to the sanctions and Donald Trump and Syria and Vladimir Putin and, and all this stuff, uh, it seems like uh, projects like Karma are becoming uh, the alternative United Nations organization because we are politically neutral and we don't care about what politi politician is doing and we're just uh, helping people to make business and establish their reputation. So uh, that's why our goal is to establish a lot of horizontal networks. So we provide the educational stuff. It will be sometimes for free. Some will be paid. The educational stuff for the investors on how to invest and track the products uh, and how to e evaluate the risks and profits. Uh, also education for the entrepreneurs, how to manage the finance, how to improve their business to be more likely uh, interesting to the investors. And also we create in a global cash flow marketplace. So in whatever point of the world you are, you can just uh, click I want to invest this amount of money with this interest rate and uh, win this amount of risks. So what's Karma today? We have almost 10,000 of people in our global community and uh, we are the rare example of the uh, uh, crypto project that have released the alpha version of blockchain before the end of the token sale last year and we also become illegal in several countries. And uh, now we are developing a stable coin because we understood that if you stay in the fiat space, uh, you cannot replace the banks. Uh, you got to be more crypto. So we have created the stable coin that is decentralized and it's based on the math and the social consensus. And uh, that will be the medium of uh, interchange of value for the remittances across border <coughs> and for the value storage to be safe in crypto. So while Bitcoin or Ethereum are falling down or going up. Uh, also, we uh, we'll create a blockchain university very soon. We are now integrating and negotiating with some universities in South Korea and Russia and the cash flow marketplace, as I told you. So feel free to join us. That's the photo from our recent Korean meetup. As you can see, uh, there's a lot of uh, grown up investors in our community. Most of them are professors or businessmen or even pensioners. So we are happy that our community is very different and we try to unite them. So if you have any questions about what trust is or what karma is, uh, feel free to ask.
Okay. Right.